<laughs> so as I, as I said, the theme is regulation of the provision of port services in the Republic of Croatia, the business practice of the Croatian seaports and competition law. As we know, competition law protects the process of competition, especially from three forms of business uh, activity that can be particularly harmful to competition. Uh, prohibited agreements such as cartels, uh, abuse of dominant position, or concentration of undertakings. Uh, also, the competition law in a broader sense also governs uh, state aids and liberalization of the provision of different types of services, uh, which are, we are talking uh, today. Uh, so, objective of competition law is social welfare, achieving e economic efficiency and general well-being by ensuring consumer protection, reducing the prices of products and services, increasing output and possibility of choice, etc. Uh, also, uh, benefits of a competitive market are spreading economic power to as large circle of people as possible and achieving greatest possible employment. Uh, competition laws are found in uh, different countries and economies, uh, even in post-communist one, such as Croatian economy. Uh, the first competition act is adopted in the USA in 1819. It is Sherman, Sherman's law. Uh, also in 1957, uh, Treaty of Rome also includes uh, the rules on competition. Uh, Croatia, Croatia adopted its uh, first uh, competition act in 1995. And uh, liberalization of freedom to provide services. Uh, how do, uh, it is defined in the EU law? Uh, the internal market includes an area without internal borders where the free movement of goods, persons, and service, services and capital is ensured. And uh, freedom to provide services applies to services which are normally provided for fee. Uh, such as activities of an industrial character, commercial character, activities of craftsmen, activities of profession. And liberalization, it means that a person who provides a service may carry out uh, this activity in a union country in which he is not a resident under the same condition that the member state prescribes for its own citizens. So, when we are talking about liberalization of the provision of port services in Croatia, uh, which, uh, which uh, uh, rules are applicable? It is a regulation uh, on the establishment of a framework for the provision of port services and common rules on financial transparency of ports from uh, 2017. Uh, called EU Seaports Re Regulation, uh, Directive on the Award of Concession Contracts, uh, EU also, and of national uh, laws, maritime domain and seaports acts. It's important to uh, point out that Croatia in 2023 adopted a new uh, maritime domain and seaports act after almost 20 years uh, <laughs> of work and, uh, and uh, consultations with stakeholders. Uh, also, uh, sorry, uh, Concession Act of the Republic of Croatia, it is uh, Act Generalis, uh, which applies on issues that Maritime Domain and Seaports Act uh, doesn't uh, regulate. So in this, pre uh, in this presentation, we will um, analyze how this uh, uh, law applies to Croatian seaports as maritime domain, legal status and competencies of port authorities, EU legal framework on port services provision we will analyze also, and disputes uh, between stakeholders in the Croatian port sector in recent years. And also we will mention uh, recent investments in port infrastructure and superstructure in Croatian port, especially Port of Rijeka. So let's start. And uh, our question is, uh, we will try to answer, are the goals of competition law achieved when it comes to the economic exploitation of Croatian seaports? So let's start with classification of seaports according to Maritime Domain and Seaports Acts. Uh, the main classification is according to the purpose uh, of ports that they serve. Port that they serve, ports are divided into ports open for public traffic and special purpose ports. 
uh, seaports which may be used by everybody under the same condition in accordance with the, their special purpose and within the limits of available capacity are ports open for public traffic while special purpose ports are seaports that are of particular use or economic use of private uh, persons. Uh, uh, other classification is considering size and importance from Croatia of ports open for public traffic, uh, which are further subdivided into ports of special international economic importance, ports of county importance and port of, ports of local significance. Also, considering activities of special purpose ports, uh, these ports are further, further subdivided into navy ports, nautical tourism ports, industrial ports, shipbuilding ports, sports ports, fishing ports, and ports for fuel supply. It is according to the new Maritime Domain and Seaports Act. And let's uh, mention some facts about the main uh, Croatian seaports. Croatian system of ports of special international economic importance uh, includes six uh, main ports. These are Rijeka, Zadar, Šibenik, Split, Ploče and Dubrovnik. And they handle cargo, passenger and cruise ships. And each port has a specific function within the system, which is uh, often historically predeterminated. Uh, let's mention Rijeka, it's the most important Croatian port, uh, cargo port. It handles different uh, types of, uh, of uh, cargo. Uh, Zadar is the second largest port in the country for domestic and international passenger traffic and the third largest port for cruise ships. In addition, it has also several uh, clients from dry bulk, liquid cargo and gener general cargo sectors. Uh, Shibanik is the smallest Croatian port in, term of, in terms of cargo, passenger and number of cruise ships. Uh, Split is the most important passenger port in Croatia. It is connected with the large islands on the Croatian coast and uh, with uh, Italian ports. Uh, Split also has cargo ports with the local hinterland consisting of Split Dalmatia area and parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, Ploče is the second larg largest Croatian port with hinterland consisting also of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Dubrovnik is the most important port for cruise ships. Also, it is connected with the nearby island and also with the south of Italy. So, uh, also in the territory of the Republic of Croatia, there are currently uh, 65 ports open to public traffic of county importance and 369 ports of local importance, which are distributed according to the geographical location within each uh, county and are under the jurisdiction of the certain county uh, port authorities. So these are ports of county and uh, local importance. And now let's say something about legal status of Croatian ports and port authorities under the Maritime Domain and Seaports Acts. To see there is, is there some changes according to the old one, old Maritime Domain and Seaport Acts. Uh, according to Article 5 of Maritime Domain and Seaport Acts, the entire Croatian shore and all ports are under the legal regime of common or public maritime domain. Also, maritime domain has the legal status of res extra commercium and res communes omnium. Uh, the the ma maritime domain uh, and seaports acts prescribes that it may be used and economically exploited on the basis of concession. And as regards the uh, status of the port authorities, uh, in order to build, manage and use port open to public traffic, a port authority is established. The port authority is public institution whose establishment structure and scope are prescribed by law. So it is public uh, body, port authority. The port authority is uh, ma also management body, body of the port open to public traffic according to law. And unless otherwise prescribed by uh, Merit and Domain Seaports Act, that is law that we are mentioning, uh, the rules regulating institutions shall apply to the Port Authority. And about the right to perform port activities, the right to perform port activities according to Merit and Domain Seaports Act, the provider of port service 
uh, service is, services is acqu acquired on the basis of concession in accordance with the special rules regulating the framework for the provision of port services, it is EU seaports regulation. So, according to the new Merit and Domain Seaports Act, Port Authority can be provider of port services in accordance with this uh, regulation, as we will see later, it is possible. According to the uh, uh, old one, it was not possible that the Port Authority provides uh, port services, but in practice uh, it was uh, it was happening. So now there is a possibility that Port Authority also uh, becomes a port service provider. As regards concessions for the provision of port services, uh, the Merit and Domain and Seaports Act, uh, the new one, recognizes three types of concession for the port services provision. Uh, the first is concession for port services that require the use of existing or construction of new buildings or other infrastructure and sub superstructure in the port area uh, that may be acquired for the period of up to 30 years. Uh, the second type is concession for other economic activities with, which do not require the construction of new buildings or uh, existing of the uh, or using of the existing ones that may be awarded for a period up to 10 years. And the third uh, type is in cases when there are justified economic interests and concession includes the construction of new buildings in addition to investments that cannot be amortized within the period referred to maritime domain and seaport sacks and total economic effects cannot be accomplished within the period referred to maritime domain and seaport sacks, it means period of 30 years, then Port Authority can grant a concession for a period of, of up to 50 years with prior approval of the Minister of Transport upon notification on the intention to grant the concession. So, uh, according to the new Maritime Domain and Seaports Act, a maximum period of concession is 50 years. Uh, concessions for the period of 99 years are no longer allowed. Uh, it was a really too long period and uh, it, uh, it uh, caused uh, foreclosure of the market uh, and also experts from the economic field uh, said that uh, no investment cycle lasts 99 years, 99 years. so uh, the new Maritime Domain uh, and Seaports Act shortened that period of concession, what we find a very positive solution. And let's see uh, EU framework. Uh, some facts about uh, the EU, uh, EU ports. 75% uh, uh, of uh, goods entering uh, Europe uh, goes by sea. Um, uh, 40 million passengers board and disembark in EU ports. Uh, they have important role in exchange of goods within the internal market, uh, in connecting peripheral and island uh, areas with the mainland. Also, one and a half million workers are employed in ports and um, the same number are indirectly employed in related industries. And uh, when we are talking about EU ports, uh, characteristic of these ports is uh, their diversity. Um, uh, as regards size, organizational structure, function, geographical characteristics, uh, ownership and management systems, historical legal heritage, degree of privatization, and so on. Also, the public sector in many EU member states has traditionally played very significant roles in management and financing of seaports, like in Croatia. Also, there is diverse nature of services provided in ports. Uh, there, there are non-economic services, services general economic interest, and uh, pure economic uh, activities. And as we will see, each type of port service requires a special approach and the adoption of special rules or market liberalization. So let's some pictures about the diverse nature of the port services. Some of them are provided to ships, some of them are provided to cargo. As we will see, so in uh, EU uh, case law, uh, port services 
are classified on uh, three categories. Uh, first, as we have already said, are non-economic services of general interest, such as maritime traffic control and safety, anti-pollution surveillance, firefighting, police and customs. <coughs> And second uh, uh, categories are services of general economic interests, which are rendered in favor of vessels calling at port and focused on safety matters such as pilotage, uh, tavage and mooring, and pure economic activities such as cargo, cargo handling, uh, bunkering, uh, collection of ships uh, generated base and residues, cargo residues. So, uh, it was uh, already established in the 90s that uh, port services are different. So, there is a uh, need for, uh, when, 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 when it comes to liberalization, there is a need for a different approach. And uh, liberalization of the port services market in the EU uh, started in 1997 when the EU Commission adopted the Green Paper of Seaports and Maritime Infrastructure and uh, adoption of EU rules uh, with that uh, Green Paper is announced in three areas. These are connection of ports into trans-European transport network, financing and charging of port services and access to the port services market. And uh, the Commission submitted two proposals for adoption of the Directive on access to the market of port services in 2001 and 2004. Uh, the first one was rejected by the Parliament and the second was withdrawn by the Commission after uh, protests by uh, of port workers unions in the front of the Parliament in 2006 while the Parliament was uh, voting about uh, that uh, directive. So what was disputable was that the rules on the liberalization of port services in these proposals did not respect the diverse nature and, and purpose of port services. And also, which was very disputable, that the proposals contained provision on the right of the ship owners to self-provide or self-handle the port services. So port workers were very worried uh, because they uh, thought that they will lose their jobs. So that's why they protested uh, in front of the parliament. And uh, what was next? 20 years after the uh, Green Paper, after long uh, negotiations with stakeholders, with member states, uh, the um, regulation, EU seaports regulation was adopted. So it was in 2017. And uh, it regulates uh, market access to the port services, uh, application of uh, the principle of freedom to provide port services, and financial transparencies, transparency of ports. Uh, as regards this uh, uh, market access to port services or liberalization of that market, it is regulated in Chapter 2 of the Port Services Regulation. And uh, according to that uh, chapter, access to the port services market can be limited uh, by introducing uh, first uh, minimum requirements for the provision of port services, uh, such as professional qualification of a provider, financial capacity, good reputy, knowledge of local conditions. And uh, these uh, this, uh, requirements uh, um, basically uh, contribute to the high quality of port services and that's why the uh, Commission and uh, uh, Parliament uh, and uh, uh, Member States uh, consent that uh, it uh, could be introduced. Also, um, the Member States may introduce limitation on the number of service provider. It is a, a condition that limits the number of providers of port services in the port area and it is allowed uh, when in case of scarcity of land or water site space, the characteristics of the port infrastructure, the nature of the port traffic and some other conditions uh, that I didn't write. So uh, selection procedure is in that case is necessary because uh, there is a limitation of the principle of the uh, market access and freedom to provide services uh, in port. So um, the selection procedure, procedure must be uh, conducted, conducted according to this uh, regulation. And uh, uh, 
Let's see, other conditions, also public service obligations may be imposed by member states to assure the accessibility of the port service to all users, availability all year long and affordability of this uh, service. And then we come to the restriction related to the internal operators. It is condition that is actually used in Croatia when it's uh, regarding the provision of port services in the new Croatian Maritime Domain in Seaports Act. Uh, when the managing body of a port may decide to provide the port service itself or to do so through legally distinct, distinct entity over which it has control, similar to which uh, it has over his own departments. So, um, uh, the service provider is considered as internal operator and it is not subject to the public procurement procedures according to Directive on Public Procurement. Procur procurement. It is an in-house procurement concept. So, um, port authorities in Croatia can decide to provide port service itself and this is also limitation of the access uh, to the freedom to provide port services, but if it is a uh, made in in how it is prescribed in the directive it is the allowed and as regard port services the scope of the, the of the regulation of uh, on the provision of port services uh, um, market access provisions these provisions from chapter 2 uh, are not uh, not applicable to cargo handling and passenger services and to, pil and to pilotage services are uh, uh, applicable only if member states so decide. So, Commission should be informed. So, um, we ask why, why it is not applicable to the most uh, important, the most profitable services such as cargo handling and passenger services. And the response is uh, that um, uh, member states uh, couldn't agree about uh, that. Uh, that uh, provisions and uh, it is the result of compromise because many member states were not uh, were not uh, uh, didn't want to liberalize the uh, the market for this uh, the most important and the most profitable services. As regards transparency provisions of the direct of the regulation, they uh, apply, apply to all type of uh, port services. And let's see about these uh, services which, which are the most disputable in uh, Croatia. Uh, in Croatia, uh, the mo uh, almost all disputes between, uh, between the uh, members of the uh, port community are about mooring services. So um, I, I tried to investigate how these services are regulated in the EU law. Uh, obviously, the Croatian law is not sufficient uh, because disputes are coming and coming and disputes are not being solved. So, I started from the beginning. In the 90s, Professor Carbone and Munari uh, created the term of technical nautical services. These are port services uh, ancillary to navigation, so they serve to the ship, not to cargo. And uh, this, uh, this term was used in, uh, by the European Commission in some of, it, of it, its instruments uh, when uh, it was creating the EU, EU port policy. Uh, there are three uh, technical nautical services, according to uh, Professors Carbone and Munari, uh, pilotage, tavage and mooring. So, uh, what was... Uh, happening uh, next with with this with regulation of these services at EU, EU level. Um, uh, under EU law, services, uh, technical nautical services are characterized by the need for availability to all their users at any time and at an affordable price. And these services are uh, universal services. These services belong also to the uh, to the uh, general interest services services of general interest, 
Uh, as we know, services of general interest are an example of market failure. And in case of these services, the uh, member states may intervene on the market of these services and organize them according to the models that deviate from the competitive ones. These are monopoly uh, situation in the port, mandatory nature of services or exclusion of self-handling of these services and also provision of services may require professional qualifications for their providers, for uh, port workers and whoever provides those services. And according to EU case law applicable to technical nautical services, including mooring, the landmark judgment in this, uh, in this area is a judgment for 1996, uh, Corsica Ferries versus Ormegatori, in which uh, uh, the European Court allowed monopolies that existed in ports of Genoa and La Spezia. Uh, the Court confirmed, confirmed that mooring services are services of general economic interest and therefore member states may organize their provision according to the models deviating from the competitive models. Also, according to the UK law, member states in that uh, in case of these services may introduce mandatory nature of technical nautical service, exclusion of self-handling in order to safeguard the safety and the member states may decide that provision of these services may require professional quali qualifications. So, what is, uh, what is uh, with regulation, EU CPOTS regulation? Is, is EU, EU case law uh, accepted in that regulations? Uh, I would say uh, partially. Uh, regulation defines these uh, services, uh, pilotage, salvage, and mooring, uh, but that not, but does not use the term technical nautical services. Uh, only pilotage is excluded from the application of the provision of liberalizations in order to provide the member states discretion to organize those services uh, um, in ways that is suitable for each port. It's, uh, subsidiarity principle, so there is uh, no need for action of the EU on, on EU level, uh, the member states may uh, by herself organize the provision of those services. Also, according to the Article 7, member states may decide to impose public service obligations to providers of port service in order to ensure the availability, affordability and safety, security so uh, this is one, uh, one uh, possibility for organizing uh, mooring and also other uh, services that are provided primarily to ships uh, to uh, introduce public service obligation, obligations according to Article 7 of the uh, EU Seaports Regulation. So uh, also what, what is very disputable in the Republic of Croatia uh, regarding the provision of port services is the issue of uh, self-handling or self-provision of uh, mooring services. As we already said, uh, self-handling is a situation when the port user provides one or more categories of port services. And uh, this issue is not regulated uh, with the EU Seaports Regulation from 2017 because, as we already said, the strong opposition of port workers' unions and protests uh, when these uh, 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 regulations were adopting uh, in the EU Parliament. And in Croatia, we have, uh, we have some problems with these issues. Let me see. How, uh, so, regulation of self provision of port services in Croatian ports only uh, self uh, provision self provision is regulated only for for the pilotage services according to ordinance on maritime, uh, maritime pilotage in addition to the prescribed technical characteristics of the ship the master must have knowledge of the local conditions of a particular port to acquire pilot exemption certificate. It is a certificate which, uh, um, which uh, allows uh, the particular ship and particular master of the ship uh, to, be, uh, to be free from the obligatory uh, uh, pilotage. And this, uh, this, uh, uh, this knowledge is checked by theoretical and practical examinations for each port. So only for the pilotage uh, service is uh, uh, regulated this issue of self-provision of port service. 
But as regards mooring, uh, we have a situation in which carriers in Croatian ports uh, self providing mooring services for vessel carrying maritime coastal line traffic in Croatia for decades. And there was, there has never been an accident or danger to port safety, for port safety, because these people have knowledge of local conditions. Uh, they sail to uh, to the same port every day, maybe more than one time a day. So uh, it, it was functioning uh, very well. But uh, recently, port authorities have started to provide and charge additionally mooring services and have employed additional personnel, uh, port workers who provide uh, door services, those services, but they do it only during the working hours of the port authority, uh, 8 a.m. until 16 p.m. And uh, port authorities also prohibited self-handling of these uh, services to the carriers. Yes. And this caused uh, certainly resistance from the carriers who also employ additional seamen on ships for the provision of mooring services and unfortunately dispute is still pending uh, this uh, is uh, not solved with the new maritime domain in seaports act although it was some hope that it will be solved but the situation is uh, the same so uh, we were, uh, right, I was writing article about that. I was talking with the carrier who has that problem. We were writing to the ministry, I don't know, to the, some other carriers to, to join with us, to, to ask for a ministry to do something with port authorities and their behavior, but nothing happened. And so uh, we were um, we were um, in this uh, in these uh, letters we were calling to secondary EU legislation, uh, but it does not regulate the issue of self handling, as I already uh, said. And then we were calling to UK's law on technical nautical services of services on general economic interests, and. Um, uh, we all we said that uh, technical nautical services should be provided to vessels in ports for reasons of protecting safety, security, and recipient of these services is ship, uh, not uh, a cargo. So, person uh, who provides that service must be qualified for the provisions, and uh, personnel employed by the uh, port authorities are not seafarers. Also, technical nautical services according to, to EU case uh, law should be provided without interruptions round the clock, round the year. And these services by port authorities are provided only uh, during their working time, 8 a.m., 16 p.m. And during the nights, the carriers can uh, moor their ships uh, and uh, ferries alone. But during the working time of the port authority, no. And port workers are also employed by some by uh, working hours. And so we said also that discretionary powers of public bodies in the member states to define services of general economic interest and organize their provisions should be used to safeguard general interest of safety. But in this case, in our opinion, uh, this is not uh, this is not so. Uh, pu public authorities use discretionary powers and forbid the self-handling of marine services to make profit from the provision of these services and not to uh, safeguard the general interest of safety as they should. And uh, in our opinion, they misused uh, discretionary powers that they have. So, um, uh, as we already said, the self-handling of mooring services does not put in danger general interests of safety, security, and, or our environmental protection, because uh, there, for years, uh, uh, carriers uh, provide them without any harm. Uh, also, when creating legal issues, uh, mm, uh, 
And our conclusion was uh, when creating legal rules on self-handling of mooring services in Croatian public seaports, best practice in Croatian ports uh, should be taken into consideration. So, um, to regulate uh, this issue, in our opinion, the EU case law should be uh, should be taken into consideration, but also the practice in, of Croatian ports, because uh, there are no rules uh, regulating uh, this issue in the EU seaports regulation and also in EU uh, in uh, uh, domestic uh, domestic rules, uh, especially maritime domain and seaports acts, and also the new one. What is pity? Uh, and another issue is also, a dispute is also about the mooring services, but in this case uh, there, was a, uh, there was a problem with competition of ports open to public traffic and marinas on the market of berthing services for recreational vessels. And uh, this issue was opened uh, during our project, uh, which was... Uh, uh, which was uh, Adriana's, uh, Adriana's uh, project and we participated uh, with the uh, Croatian Marines. So in 2018, uh, Institute of Tourism uh, in its research on attitudes and costs of boaters in Croatia established that consumer, consumers or boaters considered the service of mooring that are provided in ports open for public traffic uh, um, and uh, the same service is provided in marinas, substitutable. Uh, although marinas offer, offer additional services, such as accommodation uh, for sailors, supervision of the safety of the vessel at birth, equipping and preparing vessel for sailing, recreational services, the price has a decisive influence on demand. And the price of birds of uh, recreational vessels are significantly lower at ports open to public traffic than in marinas. And it, it was uh, decisive for uh, boaters to, uh, to uh, choose also ports open, open for public traffic to, uh, to berth their uh, recreational vessels. Uh, so in this case, it is important to, uh, to uh, analyze the articles or uh, relevant articles of maritime domain and seaports acts uh, uh, which regulate parts of the port of county and local importance so uh, there is operational part of uh, the port of the county and local importance it is intended for the mooring of vessels that perform public liner shipping and cargo vessels during loading and unloading there is also communal part of these ports uh, where the berth is allocated on the basis of permanent berthing contract intended for the local population at affordable prices uh, to, uh, to achieve their mobility. But there is violations of uh, these rules and allocation of communal moorings or berths to boaters and charter boats. So, um, the birds which are intended for local inhabitants are being uh, being uh, uh, given allocated to the to the charters, and uh, nautical part of the port where birth is assigned to can be assigned to nautical vessels. According to the new Maritime Domains and Seaport Act, uh, there are also fishing part of the port, sports part of the port, service part of the port, and. Uh, uh, we established during our project that uh, in all these parts of the port, <laughs> charter vessels were berthed. So um, local, local, uh, local population was uh, protesting in some places uh, all during the summer, especially. But uh, nothing is unfortunately nothing is solved with the new maritime domain and seaports acts regarding this issue also. Uh, also, uh, um, uh, charter vessels are berthed in ports of special international economic, economic importance for the Republic of Croatia. And there is no provision also about uh, that in Maritime Domain and Seaports Act. It is also a gray zone, but in practice it is happening. And other uh, thing, uh, what is problematic in this, uh, in this uh, case was that marina operators 
are commercial companies and these commercial companies according to Croatian tax laws are liable uh, for corporate income tax uh, while port authorities as we said in the Republic of Croatia are public institutions and are not subject to corporate income tax taxation and before because of that uh, port authorities are in more favorable competitive position or the uh, uh, port authorities than the marinas and other nautical tourism ports and that's why they can offer berths at significantly lower prices and uh, earn uh, and earn money which is not uh, taxed and uh, uh, in our in our uh, in our uh, letters, we also mentioned uh, EU uh, case law about uh, this issue. According to EU case law, uh, a functional approach uh, should be uh, taken. Port authorities are undertakings in relation to their economic activities. Uh, mooring services to recreational vessels are undoubt undoubtedly uh, uh, economic activities, and uh, that profit earned from that uh, from that activities uh, should be uh, subject to taxation. Also, uh, European Commission and General General Court uh, uh, concluded that port is considered an undertaking if and to what extent uh, he actually performs one or more economic activities. So uh, port authority, um, uh, it's not important that under national law, uh, port authority is uh, classified as institution, as public body. If she provides economic activities for that part of their activities, it should be considered as undertaking and should pay taxes. And uh, also in these cases, as I mentioned, that I mentioned here, uh, the, uh, uh, the general court uh, um, took a stand that renting out the public domain for fee constitutes an, uh, constitutes an economic activity like renting out any other asset against payment. So when uh, ports are renting out their land, uh, they are, it is economic activity and should be the income earned from that activity should be taxed. And the last case that we were also analyze, analyzing regarding recreational vessels during our project uh, was a marina's cartel. Uh, in this case, uh, the proceedings uh, was uh, started against the Croatian Chamber of the Economy and nine members of the Croatian Association of Nautical Tourism. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, uh, it was the uh, uh, Croatian Competition uh, uh, Agency that established that representatives of the marinas who participated in a meeting of the Council of the Croatian Association of Nautical, Nautical Tourism organized by Croatian Chamber of the Economy in 2012 in Biograd in Croatia exchange information relating to future the future pricing policies for birthing services. Birthing services again. And the Croatian uh, competition agency fined parties of the cartel uh, in total amount about uh, 2 million and uh, more. Uh, um, and all this started be because of the statement of the president of the association of marinas uh, who announced that in 2013 they would not rise prices of their services uh, whereas those who would rise prices would do so mer merely by the percentage of the inflation of the in the republic of croatia so this was the statement uh, according to croatian uh, competition agency that uh, that lead to, that uh, led to exchange in, cha in changes of information relating to future price and policies and uh, um, According to EU case law, uh, when a company participates in a meeting where strategic information are exchanged and uh, receives such strategic information data from a competitor, it is presumed to have accepted the information and adopted its market conduct accordingly, unless it responds with a clear statement that it does not wish to receive such data and immediately leaves the meeting.
And uh, uh, did, that didn't uh, happen in this case, but uh, the representatives of the marinas claimed they, that they did not hear the statement of the president of the association and did not receive the note from the meeting by email. And there was preliminary investigations by competition agency of the relevant market and collection of data was conducted in 2013. But because of lack of computer forensics uh, equipment, the competition agency was unable to establish whether Marinas uh, received the note from the meeting in Biograd by surprise inspections. Uh, of computers in service of marinas, so it was not established ever whether this strategic uh, information uh, on future pricing uh, were exchanged or not. And then uh, parties complained to the, uh, complained to the administ administrative court of the Republic of Croatia, uh, which ordered uh, competition agency to start the proceedings again and to determine whether parties received the note from the meeting or not. But it was uh, three years after the uh, beginning of proceedings and uh, uh, the competition agency was not able to, to, to do that, although it uh, in meantime uh, bought this uh, uh, equipment forensic, which is necessary, but uh, parties already knew uh, what was going on, which evidence could incriminate them, so they probably uh, deleted those no notes uh, from their computers. So uh, the solution, the only solution was the suspension of the proceedings. And uh, all, all uh, scholars and all uh, experts are united in the opinion that this uh, is a too formalistic approach of the administ administrative court of the Republic of Croatia. It was sufficient that company participating in such meeting where uh, strategic information was exchanged uh, to uh, establish the existence of a cartel. It uh, was not necessary to have material uh, evidence like note, like uh, email. It is uh, according to EU case law and practice of the general court and uh, EU court, it is sufficient to establish the participation in a meeting and uh, not, uh, uh, not uh, leaving the meeting and saying, I'm, I don't want to hear that information. So what, what is the consequence of this, uh, this, uh, this uh, practice of the administrative court? Is weak implementation of competition rules in Croatia. Unfortunately, it is generally, not only in port sector, but generally uh, competition rules in Croatia are not uh, implemented uh, as we would want and mm. expect uh, because to, um, of some problems uh, in court, who is too formalistic, uh, the proceedings are lasting uh, very long and situation is not uh, so good. And uh, these are disputes and uh, there are also uh, nice, uh, nice developments, good developments and developments happening in the Croatian post sector, not only disputes. And uh, I would like to finish this presentation with, uh, with some uh, positive <laughs> tone <laughs> and these are investments in uh, in uh, Croatian uh, ports uh, we will uh, mention the big investments in port uh, in port of Rijeka uh, as we know in, uh, all transport corridors in you in you in the EU belong to trans European transport network uh, which is uh, improved in accordance with the proposal of regulation on EU guidelines on development of TNT uh, from 2011 and, and uh, connecting Europe facility funding. Uh, there are two uh, networks, as you know, comprehensive network and the core network. The core network is a part of the comprehensive network, uh, which is the most uh, strategically important and should be established no later than December 2013. Uh, the decision of the European Commission from 2030 defined nine corridors of the EU core transport network. 
as a, a backbone for connecting uh, 94 main ports and 38 European key airports with railways and roads. And the port of Rijeka and the Zagreb airport are among, uh, among uh, these uh, ports and airports. So let's, these are these corridors, our Mediterranean corridor. And uh, let's say something about Puerto Rico Authority and the main concessionaries. Puerto Rico Authority was founded in 1996. Uh, uh, port operations are conducted to uh, contracted to various concession holders, as we see uh, here. Uh, the port of Rijeka is a multi-purpose multi uh, port facility capable of handling various, ty various, uh, various types of cargo at uh, five basins. Uh, as we see, it is bas uh, Russia Basin, uh, Sushak Basin, uh, Basin Bakar, Basin Omishal, and uh, Basin Russia. Uh, Basin uh, Russia. And uh, what is uh, going on now? Uh, the investment cycle of the Rijeka port systems. Uh, it, these are projects which are co-financed by the, by the uh, connecting European facility uh, from 2020 on to, to 2027. Uh, this project is going on in several phases. Uh, the first uh, phase uh, is um, upguarding of Rijeka port infrastructure, Russia Basin, uh, also, second, uh, also upguarding uh, infrastructure in in uh, in Sushak uh, and uh, port upguarding of support infrastructure and superstructure in Rijeka port. So, uh, uh, with uh, with help of the this uh, connecting European facility funding, the great changes are happening in our the, the biggest uh, port. And uh, I, I, for this uh, for this occasion, I I uh, should talk. I will talk about this uh, one uh, uh, concession which is given uh, to deep sea container terminal uh, for the container terminal on the Zagreb coast, so called Zagreb coast uh, uh, consortium consisting of consisting of a. PM Terminals, a daughter company of the largest container shipping company Mertz and Croatian company Analogic uh, offered a turnover of 1 million TEUs per year and got concession in 2021 uh, uh, for 50 years. It's a called Rijeka Getaway uh, project. The concession fee is set at uh, fixed 2 million a million euros per year uh, with a variable part that varies depending uh, on the income. In the tender, uh, the, the concessionaire could choose whether or not to build an additional uh, 280 meters of the terminal with the concession lasting 29 years and 11 months without building a new part of the terminal or 50 years if the concessionaire builds a new part of the coast. So it is the biggest uh, private infrastructure investment in, in a port in Croatia. Uh, uh, and uh, it, was, it was not possible uh, really uh, before this new Maritime Domain and Seaports Act. Uh, article 91 of Maritime Domain and Seaports Act, uh, according to that, uh, the, that article, the Port Authority is not on, the only provider of port infrastructure only, uh, anymore like uh, according to the uh, to the old maritime domain and seaports act it only ensures the construction and ma maintenance of port infrastructure so uh, the port is not the landlord the only landlord in croatia uh, anymore it can also uh, uh, it can also uh, uh, hire concessioner who will uh, who will help uh, port in that uh, in that way so in this case, uh, the concessionaire uh, will build 2080 meters of the terminal. And for that reason, the concession period will be 21 years longer. So is it worth 20 years, 21 years? I, I don't know, I'm not sure. But uh, it is also very long 
concession period of 50 years. But on the other hand, turnover of 1 million TEUs per year, it's also necessary for Croatia. It's also something which is good. So maybe too long concession period, uh, where maybe the contract is not ideal, but I don't know, 280, let's be generous, 300 meters of the coast with all equipment. Is it worth of 21 years of concession period more? <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> whether we concluded a good contract for us, but uh, something is uh, happening. Uh, Rijeka is, is, uh, is uh, getting the big players like Maersk, big uh, turnover of containers. So um, I think it's, uh, it's a good thing, but we must also uh, look at some economic uh, balance between the com between the contracting party is uh, also accomplished. I don't know, maybe we are not in position to negotiate with such a big companies. Maybe we, I don't know, but, uh, but uh, uh, that uh, 28 meters and 21 years on the other side a uh, little confuses me. <laughs> More than 600 I... yeah, and more than 100 percent longer. Okay, okay. In that case, uh, I was I, I don't know the I just uh, saw that on the Port Authority page. So this uh, this uh, this. Uh... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. I'm I'm happy about that. How long is Friday? Okay, sure. okay, so, and uh, they had um, hunting for those concessionaires, so they were so looking for potential investors and concessionaires. And uh, the first poll was unsuccessful, yeah. so it's not very uh, as attractive as it may sound. Uh, okay, so I think you have to be. Yeah. Have them. Huge project. Uh, uh, project. And uh, I think uh, the plan. Uh, Deeper basin, yes. Yeah. Deeper basin. Each year. Two million and uh, and uh, yes. We are not in position to negotiate and to uh, to put some uh, additional conditions, but uh, this uh, 28 and 21 years a uh, little confused me. Comparison of two millions of concession. Is it covered with this uh, uh, connecting European facility funding? This, uh, this. Uh, I think it is. But I think we have to look at that as a picture of the whole. Yes, yes. Interesting that there is this concession that you can get from the European Union. Yes, yes, I agree. To, to develop, sorry, to develop uh, roads and uh, railways, and so I think that, uh, having such a concessionaire yes. actually pushed all those other. Uh, yes, I agree. I agree. We are not in position to be picky and to. <laughs> so, in conclusion, um, I will uh, mention also some EU regulations. Uh, that are important in this case. Uh, so the union has wide variety of maritime ports and different models for organizing the port services. Uh, so may member states may uh, choose model of provision of port services. So uh, it's, all, it's all right if the port authority provides port services. It is not forbidden by EU law. But uh, what, is, uh, what is important 
uh, <clears throat> that uh, that in that course in that case it's important. Uh, I also mentioned uh, here that uh, decisions. Uh, uh, that uh, in that case, when Port Authority provides for service, it, it must be considered as uh, a ec economic uh, undertaking, and, and that services uh, and uh, the Port Authority must pay taxes as every other undertaking. So, um, if seaports are public institutions under national law, it doesn't mean that they can't provide economic activities and can't be subject to corporate tax. So, also the fact that seaports do not distribute their profits, but reinvest it in port infrastructure, for example, don't have a or, or don't have a statutory objective to make a profit or um, carry out missions, missions of general interest and pursue objectives that go beyond their individual, individual interests, it's not sufficient to justify more favorable tax treatment than the other resident companies. So, um, according to EU law, uh, there are lots of possibilities uh, for the provision of port services, but uh, 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 rules on state aids, rules on, um, rules on uh, competition must be obeyed. And in that case, goals of competition, such as social welfare, will be achieved. And that's my conclusion. <laughs> Thank you.